Hey everyone, in the last video we focused on the Virtual Distributed Switch or VDS. We talked about the general design and kind of the standard VDS setup. In this video we'll be talking about the NVDS or the NSX VDS. We'll talk about what it looks like from a design standpoint, some considerations, and then I'll get into the lab and show you what it actually looks like once it's already set up. So let's get to it. All right, so we see that our setup here looks very similar to what we did in our VDS review video. We have three physical hosts. We have host A, vSphere host B, and vSphere host C. These hosts each have two physical uplinks to the physical network, which are VMNIC0 and VMNIC1, and they, both, they all are the same. So we have VMNIC0 and one here, and 0 and one here as well. Now let's focus in on where we previously had the VDS. In this case, we have what's called the NVDS, which is basically the exact same thing as a VDS. It just happens to be created and managed by NSXT. Now on top of that, we have a port group, which before this was called a distributed port group. Now this one is called an NSX port group. So kind of the takeaway here is we have a few things that are configured by NSXT and managed by NSXT or in NSXT, I should say. First is the NVDS itself. When we decide which uplinks we want to assign to this NVDS, that's configured in NSXT. When we decide to create an NVDS, that's configured in NSXT. And finally, when we want to create an NSX port group or a segment in NSXT, yes, you guessed it, that's also configured in NSXT. So let's take a look at what this looks like in the lab. All right, so here we are inside of the lab and we have two hosts that I wanna focus in on. The first one is 254.74. We can see here it says NSX configuration success, and we can see the version of NSX, which is just 3.1. Now, what we want to focus in on right here is the host switches tab. So if we click that, we see that the type is NVDS and the name is NSX host switch. Now, if I go over to vCenter to this same host, let's remember this 254.74. And let's go to that host right here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the networking for this host. So we'll go to configure and we'll go down to, let's first look at the physical adapters. Okay, so we see we have four interfaces. We have VMNIC 0, 1, 2, 3. And we have one of them here. We have VMNIC 1 dedicated to the NSX host switch. And we also have VMNIC 3 dedicated to the NSX host switch. Now none of that configuration was actually done in vCenter. That was actually pushed by NSX Manager when it did the setup for this. And if you're wondering where we did that configuration, I'll show you. Let's flip over to NSX and let's go ahead and edit the configuration for this transport node right here, this vSphere host. We're gonna go to configure NSX and we'll go to next. And remember I said VMNIC one and three. So the first thing we see is we have the option to select either NVDS or VDS. In my case, clearly we're talking about NVDS here. If we scroll down to the bottom, there we go. We have two interfaces that are active-active, which is based on our uplink profile, which is right here. And we've allocated VMNIC1 and VMNIC3 in NSXT, we've made that decision. So if I wanted to change that, which in my case, I don't have any other available interfaces, but if I did, I could click that and I could change that to another interface. Now let's go ahead and cancel out of that. And we're gonna go back to vCenter and let's look at some other stuff around this, this transport node. Let's go to virtual switches. I'm gonna minimize this distributed switch. This is out of scope for what we're talking about now. We're gonna focus right here, this NVDS, the name is NSX host switch. If we expand that, we have our segments. These are created in NSXT. We see our VMNIC one and three, again, which we created or we allocated from NSXT. Now notice something's missing here. I want you guys to pay attention here. NVDS NSX host switch, is anything missing here? If you spend a lot of time in vCenter, you should know this right off the bat. If you haven't, let me show you an, an, a regular distributed switch that is managed from vCenter. So if I expand this one, look at this. I can manage physical adapters. I can click these dots. I can migrate networking. I can view settings. I could remove it from the host. Now notice the NVDS, I can't do any of that. The reason is because, as I said previously, the NVDS is completely managed from NSXT. I can do all of those things, but I have to go into NSXT to do those things. Now, before we wrap up this video, I wanna show you guys one more thing, which is we're gonna actually prep this host 254.75. We're gonna go ahead and prep it and push an NVDS on it where there wasn't one previously. So let's do that. First, let's take a look at that host 254.75. 
I want to look at the physical adapters. We see we have, okay, so we have a V switch. That's just a standard switch on VMNIC 0 and 3. So we have VMNIC 1 and 2 available. So those were the uplinks that we're going to use. So in our case, let's go one more verification. We'll look at virtual switches just to confirm. Okay, so we have a standard switch here. We're not going to even worry about that in this case because we're pushing a new NVDS. So let's go back to NSX and let's go ahead and select the right host. We'll select 254.75. Now we're going to go to configure NSX. And I've gone through all of these steps in the NSX from scratch series. Even though this is 3.1, all of the steps are still the same. So in this case, we're going to select NVDS. There we go. And for name, I'm going to go ahead and say NVDS test will be the name. I'm going to assign a transport zone. This will be just our default overlay transport zone, which in most cases is all you need. Now for NIOC profile, we're going to select default. For uplink profile, I have one that we're going to use here. We're not really focused on these details for this video. And we'll go ahead and do DHCP for TEP. There we go. So based on this uplink profile, we have two active active interfaces. So we need to assign physical NICs for these. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. And there we go. We see VMNIC1 and VMNIC2. So I'm going to go ahead and select VMNIC1 there and 2 here. I will tell you if for some reason you're going through this and you don't have anything showing up here, more than likely the problem is you don't have any available interfaces that are unused on your host. In this case, this is all we need. I'm going to select that and hit finish. All right, so while that says preparing the host, let's go ahead and flip over to vCenter. And I'm going to do a little bit of a time lapse with this video just to wait so we can kind of take a look at this once it pushes the NVDS. All right, so it looks like things are good. Let's go ahead and flip over to NSX and see what the status is. Okay, so we see the status is success. That looks good. Now let's go back to vCenter. And you see here we have that new NVDS here called NVDS-test. If we expand it, we see our segments from NSX. That's perfect. And most importantly, we see that we now have VMNIC 1 and 2 dedicated for this NVDS. Now, I'm kind of getting a little bit ahead of the horse here or the cart before cart before the horse. That's it. When I say this, because this is basically the scenario you run into when you drop NSX in a brownfield environment. We drop this NVDS here, but you have to allocate uplinks. So where do you get those uplinks from? In many cases, you pull them from the existing VDS or VSS, depending on what you're running. Obviously, in my lab's case, I already had spare uplinks, so it was no big deal. But this is one of the biggest drawbacks behind using the NVDS. And in the coming videos, I'll talk about the newer option called Converge VDS, which I think will be really attractive. But there, again, are design choices to make when you go that route. And don't worry, we're going to talk all about it. So I'll see you guys there.